So today we are investigating determinatives. Um, most people have never heard that name before, but it's a feature that you will find in certain early ancient languages like Akkadian and even Egyptian. But we'll be looking at it from the Akkadian perspective. So what is a determinative? Well, a determinative is an orthographic sign, in other words, a sign used when writing, used to indicate what type of word is being used. And we kind of don't really have that in, in English, in most languages, as a matter of fact. Most languages do not use determinatives. Now, we could, if we wanted, and it may involve using some type of picture or something, right, to indicate the type of word being used. We basically don't even do that. I mean, most language systems these days are phonetic, with the exception of languages like Chinese. So we don't really need to indicate the type of word that it is. But if you think about how Akkadian is, it's written typically on small tablets and and the writing system is syllabic. And so you'll read and vocalize, um, you know, if a, a logogram is not used, you're vocalizing it. But either way, you have to figure out what the word is because it's just a small space. And so maybe you don't need to do a whole lot of heavy lifting if you have a sign like a determinative that can help you understand uh, what that word really is. I mean, it's still sounding pretty abstract. So let me give you an example real quick. And I'm going to use the word in English, the angels. So just think of the angels, right? Take a moment. And um, what first comes to mind? Now, most of you may be thinking of uh, supernatural beings or something, right? Others may be thinking of uh, a baseball team. Uh, still others may be thinking of something more. Well, we could think of it as meaning any of those, supernatural beings, uh, the city, Los Angeles, right, the angels, other places like the Angeles National Forest, um, or even Angels Peak in New Mexico. We could think of the baseball team or maybe a group of women like Charlie's Angels, for those of you who know the show. So let's look at some Akkadian determinatives in front of these words that we have in English. Now, uh, humor me when it comes to using the Spanish Los Angeles, Los Angeles, uh, when we want to reference the city. So here, if we're referring to the heavenly beings, we're going to use this symbol that looks like a starburst uh, to the left of the word angels. If you see that symbol in front of the word angels, you know that the angels being spoken of here are the luminous beings. And that's a picture of a, a star or, um, you know, the, the sky, um, heaven, as it were. And so this is used for in Akkadian to denote divinity or the sky itself. Divinity could be the name of a god or it could be someone who is in the divine realm, like a saint. And in fact, Maybe we have this in English, if we were to write the word saint and maybe abbreviate it ST period, you could almost think of that like a determinative, but you're going to vocalize it as saint. It's just an abbreviated form of the word. And saint, of course, comes from the Latin sanctus, which just means holy. So uh, maybe the way to think of it isn't necessarily just divine beings, but the holy things. Well, if we're looking at the city, the city of Los Angeles, we have two determinatives. We have the first one on the left is a picture of a city. It's indicating to you that the word that follows Los Angeles or the angels um, is just referring to a city. You see this character at the end. So when you have place names, we'll have a determinative that is sealed with this key symbol at the end as a, a hanging determinative or an end determinative. Same with the Angeles National Forest, right? So the, the image on the left is a picture of mountains. Um, and so these are three mountain peaks. Really, it indicates sort of the, let's call it the wilderness, the distant, you know, the place that's not a city. And so how do you represent that? Well, mountains is, is a good way of doing it. And because it's not just like Mount Angel or Angel's Peak, 
um, you know, where you would have a rock with it too. Uh, there's a rock symbol for lithographic uh, places or, you know, if a certain type of stone is like an angel stone or something, right? Um, you'd have the rock symbol. But here, these mountain symbols um, precede the Angeles National Forest because it's the name of a place. And because it's a name, it's followed by this key determinative at the end. Well, now let's go to some stuff a little more fun. We've got the California Angels. And who knows today how they're called? Just the Los Angeles Angels, corny as that is. For a time, the California Angels, for a brief moment in time, were called the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. You know, look, it's an hour away from LA. What are you doing? Like, this is not this is not even in the same county. It's in Orange County. It's not in LA County. Why are you calling them Los Angeles Angels? Are you trying to appeal to LA? Like, come on. I don't know if that's even worked, to be honest. Are you trying to appeal to people outside of California? I mean, it's down the street from Disneyland, for goodness sakes. Everyone knows where Anaheim is. So if we were to look at the California Angels, notice how I have the place um, you know, of California with a core or that mountainous determinative in front of it, the key following California, capping off the name. Then I have this other symbol in front of angels, that's a symbol for men. And it works for like clans, tribes, things like that. So since they're a team, I'm going to use that determinative in front of angels. And if I want to do that, you know, exhaustive name, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, you can see the two different city uh, determinatives being used, capped with the key determinatives at the end as well. So you've got the Uru. Uru is a city um, sign. Um, you know, in front of both Los Angeles and Anaheim. And then from the team itself, you have this Lu, uh, Lu 2 symbol. Finally, for our examples, we're going to look at a great show, Charlie's Angels. And uh, there's two determinatives here. The first is just the dish sign, dish, not like dishes and plates, but oh, it sounds like dish, uh, just the mark one, like going down. And that indicates a person's name, male person's name. And then uh, if you look after Charlie in front of angels, you see the female sign, right? And so this is munus or sal, sometimes me too, symbol. And so uh, these are Charlie's angels referring to this you know, group of women. Uh, of course, I'm going to use the one with Farrah Fawcett in it. Uh, some of you may have only seen the movie that came out, I don't know, last couple decades. I don't even know how old it is anymore. Um, and if that's your only exposure, you know, you're you're living a, a sheltered life. So, I mean, this is late 70s at its best. And when you think of it, think of the determinatives used both for Charlie's and Angel's, right? So just to recap, a determinative is an orthographic sign used to indicate what type of word is being used, okay? We thought of the English word angels. And we can apply any number of Akkadian determinatives in front of that word. And that's going to let us know what the word is. Uh, is it the, you know, the heavenly beings? Is it a city? Is it a place like the Angeles National Forest? Is it a team like the uh, baseball team? Uh, or is it a group of women like, you know, those found in Charlie's Angels? And just by reading the determinative or determinatives that basically hold the word in place, you know without anyone saying anything more what the word is referring to specifically. So here on our list, you know, we've got all these different ones. And if I point to it, you should be able to tell me which one it's referring to based on the determinative. So if you want, I mean, as a, a fun drill, it's, it really works, um, especially for those of you who are newer at learning Akkadian signs, go ahead and just start jotting down these signs in front of the appropriate, you know, words that you find whenever you're writing something out in English um, or whatever language you prefer. And, you know, you by, by doing that exercise, determinatives will be very second nature to you. And pretty soon when you start reading Akkadian texts, you know, it won't be a weird thing. Be like, what is that? Is that a logogram? Is that a, um, you know, is that a syllabic sign? Is it producing some kind of syllable? Or, oh, 
uh, it's a determinative. You won't need that. You'll just be reading and be like, yeah, it's a determinative. Like I'm used to writing. I'm used to seeing these specific determinatives. So my expectation is that the word that follows this, you know, most likely a noun, you know, I, I don't know if it's anything other than a noun um, that follows is going to be uh, whatever type of determinative sign uh, is indicating, you know, the type of noun to you. So, all right, that's determinatives. Uh, go forth with it. And let me know how it goes. Or if you have any questions uh, about determinatives, now is a good time to bring them up.